Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to make this chuck that I made for my homemade lathe powered by a drill. I showed you how to make this lathe last week, however some of the problems with it were it was quite hard to grip material and you couldn't just grip it on the standard chuck with the drill. On top of that I also added some bearing support for the lathe so that all of the axial force isn't going straight through the drill's bearing, it's going through this bearing which is attached to the base. As well as that I also added a better tailstock support that can spin round. So I hope you enjoyed this video and the main focus is going to be on the chuck but I'm also going to be showing you how I did these other two upgrades. If you want to see how I made the lathe originally I made a tutorial last week so that will be linked in the description down below. So to start off I just did a rough design in my design book. This is just a rough plan and in the end I ended up doing it slightly differently but this just gives me a bit of an idea of how I'm going to make it and what I'm going to do so that I'm not going in blind. And a scanned in version of this design will be available on my website which there will be a link to in the description down below. So now let's start making the chuck. So for cutting out the circle of the chuck I'm going to be using my x carved CNC but there's loads and loads of different things that you can use to cut out this circle. The reason I'm using the CNC is because it's the easiest and simplest method that I can use and it makes sure that I get a perfect circle every time. Other things that you could use is simply a hole saw kit like this, a jigsaw like this if you drew out the circle cut around it and then trued it up a little bit or even just a simple trim router with a circle cutting jig. So now I've traced, traced the shape of this circle over onto this sheet of 3mm thick aluminium and this is what I'm going to be using to stabilise the lathe chuck. For cutting it out I could have again just used my CNC but it would have probably taken quite a long time and also it's a bit annoying for all of the viewers like you if you don't have a CNC and I'm using it constantly. So for cutting it out I'm just going to be using a simple hacksaw and files which pretty much everyone has. Using a drill press I've now drilled a 7mm hole right in the middle of the plywood circle. The same hole is then drilled into the centre of my newly cut aluminium circle. Using an M8 thread top, I'm going to top this hole to M8. I'm now going to cut the end off this M8 bolt and use it as an M8 threaded rod. The two discs can then be threaded on and be sandwiched by two different nuts and two washers. So I've now chucked it up in the lathe and I've got the drill set on the slowest RPM possible. So it's not spinning very fast. I'm now going to use a metal file to trim down the aluminium piece so it's the exact same shape as the wood. I started out with the metal file then I found out that you could actually just use the standard chisel if you just did it slowly and made sure you didn't put too much pressure. Also the aluminium did end up blunting the chisel quite a lot but it wasn't too bad. After that both of these discs are complete true circles and also the aluminium's got a nice shiny edge on it. For even more support I'm adding another layer of 7mm multiplex plywood and just to prove again that you don't need a CNC machine because looking back at some of my other comments on other videos they get quite annoyed when you use a CNC machine to cut out a circle. This time I'm just using standard jigsaw and pencil. Once it's cut out I again tap the centre hole to M8. I then clamp it up to the other two discs which are already turned true make sure that it's clamped very tightly using the bolts and the nuts and then I turn it true. Another method to use if you don't want to spin this up on the lathe when it's not on centre is you can just chuck it up in a normal drill and use a belt sander but this didn't work quite as well as the drill in the lathe. I then also turned a small spike on the end of the M8 threaded rod so that it's got a little something to push into the centre of the wood. Now that I've turned this little tip here all of the layers now need to be glued together. The glue that I'm using is some 12 hour set epoxy resin and this is pretty good and it's going to hold all of the pieces very tightly. I need to make sure that they're all lined up so when I do it I clamp them together and tighten up the bolt. I need to make sure that you don't get any glue on the threaded rod however. So this is what the chuck looks like once all the glue is finished drying and it's pretty solid but I'm going to put this aside for now and I'm going to work on the bearing support to make sure that all of the axial force is not going through the bearing on the drill which would pretty much mess it up. I'm going to be using these skateboard bearings. So I'm not going to go into as much detail on this as I was in making the chuck since this main focus of this video is on making the chuck and not the bearing support but I'm still going to show it in case you want to make one yourself. And I started off just by cutting some 50mm squares of pine strip wood on my hand miter saw and then assembling them together with wood glue and screws so that they all join together. I then cut out the front shape using a jigsaw out of some 18mm multiplex birch plywood which is really really strong. That was again attached with the usual method of applying wood glue and then securing it with wood screws. 
So now I've shaped this section out of wood, which is very solid and it's got a lot of different pieces that were all screwed together very tightly and it's going to go in front of the chuck here and it's basically going to hold bearings, these skateboard bearings, and this is going to take all of the force instead of the drill. And first I need to drill the hole all the way through before I can put the bearings in, so what I'm going to do is use this tip of this drill here in the lathe, spin it a little bit and just mark a hole right there. Now on the drill press I'm going to make sure that it's completely vertical and use a 20mm forced a bit to drill a hole all the way through. So I've drilled the holes so that they're tight fit on the bearings and what I can now do is put them on bolt to make sure that they're all lined up, put some epoxy resin on them just a little bit and hammer them into the hole. Now I want to set the bearing support flat on the lathe and I also put the threaded rod into the chuck of the drill. It sits pretty much flat on the lathe, there's a little bit of wobble as the bearings inside move around a little until the glue sets. You can push it down and it's going fine. So to attach it to the bed of the lathe I'm going to be using screws going into this. I don't want to glue it because at some point I might want to remove it if I'm making something like a pen blank and I don't actually have any 90 degree angle brackets so I'm going to make some out of this 90 degree sheet steel and if you had angle brackets with just holes in already you could do that and you don't have to do this step. An angle grinder was used to cut off the brackets and then a belt sander was used to clean up the edges. Using my drill press and a drill clamp I then drilled holes in each side of the brackets and I needed to make sure that I applied a bit of oil to lubricate the drill bit so that it didn't break. This is what the three brackets look like once they're done, they're basically just square angles of steel with holes in them and I've also taken off the bit and given them a little bit of a chamfer. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to attach them in places like this and just above the surface so that when you screw it down they won't be pressing against the floor but they'll be pulling the entire piece down. Now these brackets have been added we can then put the support back onto the lathe and as you can see once the bolt is in and I put a little clamp on it here. It spins freely, yet it's being held in place, so now that it's in this position, I'm going to screw it down. After I've attached these, as you can see, this is completely solidly held in place, and you can't move any of this, but still, this part spins very freely, and you can still spin it. Now it's time to make these bits here, which are going to be the vice jaws, and these are again going to be made out of the angle steel. I'm now going to cut the metal off into 2cm sections and I'm going to do that for 4 different pieces. They were all clamped together and then ground at once to make sure that they were even on both sides so that when you spin up the chuck it doesn't wobble as one jaw is exactly the same weight as the other one. And I have 4 pieces of steel which are all in 90 degree angles on are also exactly the same thickness. Now I need to drill a 6mm hole right through the middle of all of these going all the way through on the bottom and these need to be in the exact same place on each one and then what I can do is I can put an M6 bolt through them. So now I've got these 6mm holes drilled all the way through in here, I can mark on corresponding marks where I want to drill 6mm holes through the all the way through the chuck. Once that's drilled an M6 bolt can go on and each of the 90 degree pieces of steel can just be held on by a bolt like this. I'm not going to clamp them up yet though because I still need to drill and tap an M6 hole here for another bolt to go through. Now each one of these L brackets has an M6 threaded hole which can accept the M6 threaded bolts. Using the non-threaded 6mm holes I can then put the M6 bolts through and then I'm going to attach them using nuts and washers on this side. So this is what the finished chuck looks like, at the moment it's looking a little bit sketchy because I think I need to shorten these bolts but I'm going to definitely make sure that I never go any high RPMs on this because there's a lot of heavy parts and spinning very fastly on just a piece of plywood is not a good idea so make sure you use slow RPMs while using a chuck like this. Each of these homemade jaws has an M6 bolt attached to it with a nut so once you tighten this down on your workpiece you can then also tighten this down on it and make sure that it's very secure. If I want to use the chuck to hold something wider, I can undo these bolts and spin each piece round so they're facing the other way and then I can clamp much wider pieces. So now using the chuck, I'm going to try and turn this square piece of pine into something circular and vaguely meaningful. The centre hole is marked here and then when you push it into the chuck, it's quite a tight fit with the jaws set at the moment but that's just a coincidence. You can then do up all of the bolts and do them up evenly, make sure one's not much tighter than the other. 
then do up these different nuts which are on each one which is going to help hold them in place. Once they're all done up it should be able to spin quite nicely. Now I've also engaged the tailstock so that it spins freely like this and has tailstock support. One of the problems that I had was my M8 bolt that it was running on was quite soft and the tailstock support was rubbish and it would keep on popping off the tail support and bending the M8 bolt. So I think the thing that was causing it was the tailstock support originally wasn't very good. So what was happening is as it was vibrating, it would rip off the tailstock, get caught on the tool as it flung off and just bend the M8 bolt completely. So to fix that, I've actually upgraded the tailstock support here. What I did was I took a cast aluminium ingot, which I'd made a while ago in a previous video, and you could have just used a sol any solid piece of metal. I just had this one lying about, and I turned it on the lathe, pretty much just like I did with the wood, but it took a little bit longer and blunted my tools a little bit more. And I turned it into just this sort of dome shape, threaded it from ends threaded it for an M6 bolt all the way through and drilled in a bearing as I've got holding the lathe on the left here, and this was just a skateboard bearing. Put in an M8 bolt bolted it on and then now when it spins the support for the tailstock actually spins as well instead of the tailstock support being stationary this means that it can actually spin and it'll be much better at supporting it so now let's give everything a quick test and see how well it works So this is the result of about 10 minutes of wood turning. It turned out all right. It was meant to be a little handle for this metal file since the one I've currently got on it was bodged off another metal file and it doesn't fit at all whatsoever and it's very uncomfortable. It's way too small so I need to make a better version and put a metal band around it so it doesn't split. But that's my attempt for now just to test out the chuck and it seemed to work very well. It's not come loose whatsoever and the tailstock upgrade worked really nicely as well. So thanks for watching guys, I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you have any other ideas on what you think I could do to this lathe, then please post them in the comments section down below. I've got a couple of upgrades that I think I could make, including like the tailstock section. This actual whole bit wobbles about a little bit, so it's not very good at the moment. But instead of upgrading this lathe, I do actually plan on making a much better one using a two horsepower motor that I've bought and lots of welding of metal. So this will this is the woodwork version and I'm going to make a metalwork version. Also again, sorry for this video being slightly laid out, this one was only a couple of days instead of a week, but it's because I've been building this 3D printer, this is a Prusa i3 3D printer kit that I bought for £200, and I think it works pretty well, and hopefully I'm going to have some more 3D printing projects on my channel, so if you have any ideas, please post them in the comment section down below as usual, or send me a personal message with what you think I could 3D print. Obviously, I'm not going to 3D print a gun because I like not being in prison, but one thing that I think I might try and make is my own 3D printer from my own design, running off RepRap Electronics, and then make a tutorial of it on YouTube for you guys to follow if you want to make a 3D printer for very cheap.